a place of slaughter. That was the meaning of Savo, the name of the area where the Kenya-Uganda railway will be constructed. Many workers believed that it was a bad omen, and to people who believed it, they would be right. Because in the span of eight months, approximately 135 people will be killed by two lions. It all started in March of 1898, when Colonel John Henry Patterson was sent to oversee the construction of the railway at Savo area. But before arriving to the site, people were already talking about killer lions causing trouble. After Patterson's arrival, he was notified of the missing workers, blaming it to vicious lions. But Patterson, thinking this was just a rumor, decided not to do anything until solid proof is given. However, the evidence appeared quickly when they noticed that one of their men was nowhere to be found. They began searching for him only to find his mutilated body. Patterson, worried that a lion might be responsible for his men's death, sent out a hunting party to locate the creature. To his surprise, he stumbled upon additional lifeless bodies, all belonging to men who had vanished during earlier expeditions. Soon, more workers would go missing, and it became clear that the culprits were two maneless male lions prowling around the camp at night, snatching people from their tents as they slept, before dragging them to the bush and devouring them. In order to prevent the attacks, Patterson instructed the crew to create several campfires and build thorn fences around the camp, barricading themselves from the man-eaters. However, these makeshift protections would soon prove to be ineffective in deterring the beasts. Not only the lions were not afraid of fire, they would also jump over the thorn fences with ease. Sometimes, they would even ignore the fences and just drag their victim right through them. Patterson noted that at the start of their attacks, only one lion at a time would enter the campsite and take victims. But as more nights went on, they got bolder, entering together to seize victims, even taking one each so they wouldn't have to share. Patterson would then spend many sleepless nights trying to kill the cats, but all his efforts seemed to fail. He would set up traps, intentionally making some vulnerable areas so that the lions would use that route. Then, he will position himself up in a tree and wait for them. However, the lions would always attack on the other side of the camp miles away from him, as if the lions knew his plans. Still, despite the many attacks and mortality, there were still some lucky escapes. On one occasion, one of the lions would enter a tent to attack a man sleeping in a mattress. But instead of taking the person, the lion bites the mattress and took off with it. Another time when one of the lion went into a larger tent, housing some 14 workers, it accidentally grabbed a sack of rice and ran with it in its mouth, leaving a trail of rice on the ground. Patterson described the lions to be highly unpredictable. They would attack in random parts of the camp, sometimes going in the very middle, passing other tents before selecting their preferred target. One time they went away for months that the workers thought they were gone for good, only to come back and attack even more fiercely. The relentless lion visitations caused the railway construction to stop, and some workers would even abandon the site. On December, eight months after the attacks began, Patterson came up with a plan to finally end the pesky lions. They set up an elaborate trap to lure the lions into a cage. Inside the secure part of the trap were armed men with rifles. The next night, one of the lions entered the trap, but things didn't go as planned. When the gate fell, the lion began thrashing at the bars, scaring the men. Despite being at point-blank range, none of them managed to hit the lion. Instead, a stray bullet accidentally hit the lock, holding the gate shut, allowing the lion to escape with only minor injuries. Patterson was absolutely baffled by this failure. They tried to track the lion, but after two days of searching, they gave up. A couple of days have passed with no lion incidents. When finally, on the morning of December 9th, a worker came running to Patterson, informing him that a lion was eating a donkey close to the river. Patterson grabbed a rifle and went with haste. Upon arriving to the scene, they stalked the lion. But the lion heard them coming and run into a thick bush. Patterson then assembled the remaining workers to surround the bush and make loud noises to flush the lion out into a clearing. It was then when the lion emerged from the thick vegetation. 
face to face with the beast. Patterson made his shot, but the rifle misfired. The lion growled at Patterson before running away from the noise made by the workers. Patterson, determined to finish the job, went back to the donkey. He knew that the lion would come back for its food. After all, it has a lot of meat left. He waited on top of a tree close to the donkey. He was alone and it was a quiet night, very peaceful, when suddenly he heard some sounds coming from the bushes. Soon he saw the silhouette of the lion prowling slowly towards his tree. Then he realized that the lion was actually stalking him and not going for the donkey. The tension broke when the lion moved in for the attack. Patterson then aimed his rifle and shoot. The lion growled indicating a hit. Patterson fired more shots while the lion jumped and run through the bushes. The lion escaped again, but this time it was hit multiple times. Patterson knew that the lion would not get far away. Back at the camp, the workers were already celebrating, but not Patterson. He had to see the body before he celebrate. When morning comes, Patterson and his men tracked the blood trail left by the lion. They only went about 30 meters from the tree, and there it was lying in the ground. Its skin was full of scars from going through the thorn fences multiple times. It was 9 feet 8 inches long and took 8 people to carry it to the camp. The whole camp celebrated and no rail construction was done that whole day. Few days have passed with no lion incident. It seemed that the other lion was mourning for his companion. But on the 11th day, a railroad inspector had a close encounter with the remaining lion. They found lion pug marks on the ground just outside his tent. Not only that, one of his goats were killed and half-eaten. He tried to lure the lion with another live goat, but the lion just ate the poor goat during the dark of the night without being seen. Next morning, Patterson instructed his men to erect a platform close to the freshly eaten goat so he can get a clearer shot. When night comes, it was dark, but the platform has a better viewing angle than a tree. Finally, the lion appeared. It was prowling towards the goat. Patterson aimed carefully and fired multiple times. The lion was hit, but still got away. Next morning, they tracked the blood trail, but they never found the lion. Another ten days had passed without lion activity. Everyone hoped that the lion had died from the bullet wound. But on the night of December 27, screams can be heard on one part of the camp. It was so dark that all Patterson could do was fire his gun into the air to scare the lion. Luckily, no casualty was reported. The very next night, Patterson and one of his men waited on a tree close to the incident. This time, the moon was clear and the night was bright. Patterson fell asleep when suddenly his men woke him up. There in the distance, they can see the lion prowling in the grass, slowly approaching the tree. It turns out that the lion was actually stalking them, but Patterson had a clear shot. When the lion was about 20 meters, Patterson fired multiple times. The lion growled as it get hit by multiple bullets, but it didn't go down. It still managed to ran off, but Patterson was happy with this result. There was so much blood on the ground that he knew it was done. The next morning, Patterson and his men tracked the lion. It was not far, not even a mile when they found it growling. It was heavily injured from multiple bullet wounds, but its fangs are bared, warning them to not get close. Patterson carefully aimed and fired at the lion. The lion, summoning all its strength, charged at him. Patterson fired more shots, but the lion keeps getting up and charging at him. When Patterson tried to reach for another rifle, he realized his men had left him for the safety of a tree. Patterson had to do the same. In the tree, Patterson took a carbine from one of his men and shot the lion again, causing it to collapse. Despite this, the lion was still trying to reach Patterson fiercely with every bit of its strength until it finally succumbed to all its injuries and died. The lion took at least six bullets before going down. It was nine feet and six inches long. Patterson stated that both lions were responsible for at least 135 human casualties. But he also claimed that the numbers could be higher due to the fact that many people involved with the construction simply vanished without a trace. Thank you everyone for watching through the end. Give it a thumbs up if you like this video and comment your thoughts below. Also hit subscribe if you are interested in this types of contents.